Hi guys, so in today's video, let's talk about the 10 must-have photography gear and accessories for beginner photographers. So I'm Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. All right, so let's go straight to the point. The first thing that I would suggest for every beginner photographer is for you to have at least one prime lens to match your zoom lens. I am assuming that you actually have a zoom lens already because if you bought your camera with a kit lens, that is considered a zoom lens. Why do I suggest having a prime lens? It's not necessarily just because it gives great bokeh or that out of focus blurred background, but rather it's a discipline that I would suggest that you guys learn. Meaning learning how to zoom using your feet, knowing, knowing the differences between a prime and a zoom lens is also very, very beneficial. You have to be able to learn the pros and the cons of having a zoom lens. That's where you'll be able to see distortion, that's where you'll be able to see compression. With a prime lens, it's much easier for you to be able to use and you get better, better images right out of the box, which basically would encourage you to shoot more. But I, I don't suggest getting a zoom, a prime lens just primarily for that, but rather get it for that discipline of knowing what a prime lens can do and what a zoom lens can do. So that's the first one. Secondly, this one is very, very important to invest in good memory cards. Make sure to buy branded ones because branded ones will be the most reliable. That's why I've been working with this brand for such a long time and it's never failed me. Um, I use two types of cards. The first one is the UHS-2 or we also have the UHS-1. Both are Standisk Extreme Pros. Now, what's the difference between the two? One is faster than the other, but you have to make sure that your camera is capable of the UHS-2 card. If not, just stick with a UHS-1 card. Now, if you've decided already which one do you wanna get, maybe a UHS-2 or a UHS-1, I suggest getting two, not just one. Always have a backup. So if you have a backup card, keep the case that it comes with so that it's always secure inside your bag. These plastic cases are free that comes with that comes with the SD card when you buy it. Though I would also suggest if you want, which is the third one, you get yourself a good card case. If you decide to have more than one or two cards, these card cases are fantastic. Like I prefer using this one. It's a think tank SD card case. It handles nine because I use nine during a wedding, but not necessary for beginner photographers to have this type of card case. You can get smaller ones that will just hold four but it's always essential for you to have a card case to keep your um, SD card secure if, if they are not inside the camera. Once you have this, you have to make sure that you also have a very good card reader. Now I use this one, this is again another SanDisk, but this is UHS-2 compatible and USB-C for my MacBook Pro. Uh, I suggest getting branded ones because we've destroyed a few cards before with generic ones. You see this little grooves, oh sorry, this little grooves that you see here. It's very easy for you to break them, especially with generic card readers. They're not that expensive, so I suggest getting the branded ones. Sandis are okay. They're very, very good actually. Next, while we're still in the topic of memory, I would suggest also getting an external hard drive for you to be able to store your files in after you've transferred it in your computer. As a beginner photographer, you, you might have the tendency to be shooting a lot more than what is really needed. So a very good hard drive, a good external hard drive will be good for you to be able to store your images and not keep them in your laptop. Um, I use a WD hard drive so far, they've never failed me and fantastic, fantastic warranty, especially here in the Philippines. Okay, another thing that you need are extra batteries. The worst thing that can happen is while you're out shooting is that you run out of battery. So an extra battery will always be good to have in your bag. I think this one's self-explanatory. You need extra batteries. If you want to get a, car, uh, a battery case also, I use this one, the Think Tank battery cases. Okay. So when you buy your camera out of the box, you also have your basic straps. Now, I've never really been fond of using those basic straps because they're very, very painful. That's why I suggest you get yourself a very good camera strap. The one that I would suggest is this one, the Peak Design Sling. It's, a, it's thick so that it doesn't really hurt your, 
your shoulder too much and it's very easy for you to be able to access the camera. And if you're not really that particular, or if, you, if you're not really fond of straps, you could also use the Peak Design Clip. This one just mounts at the bottom of your camera. This one, this plate mounts at the bottom of your camera. And then this one, the, the, the mount itself, you could put in your bag or your belt and it just slips in like this. So any would be good, but for beginners, I would suggest that you get the, the sling first. It, it doubles up as a camera strap in a sling, so it's very, very easy to use and very comfortable to be lugging around the whole day. Next, your cleaning kit. You have this one, the rocket blower, and a bunch of um, cleaning paraphernalia. Okay, I'll explain each one. This one is really built to remove dust from your sensor. All you have to do is put your camera above and then blow some air into it to be able to remove the dust. This also works well for your lenses. So if, um, let's say, here's your lens. If you see some dust here, all you have to do is blow it first to be able to remove it, uh, to remove all the bigger particles. Then you have a bunch of cleaning cloths to be able to wipe them off. I use actually three. This one just came free with my MacBook Pro. And to be honest, I really love it for cleaning glass, for, for non-sticky ones, just general cleaning. I also have a Microtex cloth. And uh, this is to clean the lenses outside. And maybe sometimes I would use it for the glass if I, if I don't have this around. It's also good for glass. And for emergencies, I also have my, Z my Zeiss cleaning wipes. This one is pre-lubricated so that when you open it up, you can just clean your glass, especially for those that don't really want to come off. Yeah, so very, very essential. Always keep your gear clean. So this is for the exterior of your lens and your camera. This one is to clean the glass itself. This one is for, for uh, stubborn dirt. And this one is generally to just remove all debris from your lenses and your camera. Next, you also have to have a good camera bag here. This is my preferred camera bag. This is a Peak Design uh, 20 liter backpack. Though you could use any camera that, uh, could use any bag that actually fits your needs. If you have one camera and one lens also only, you could, you could get those smaller bags, but it's essential for you to have a good camera bag to protect your investment. So last but not the least is this one. This is a five-in-one reflector. Um, the one I use is from Photix. Basically, these reflectors are ways for you to be able to manipulate the light. Uh, it's five, called five-in-one because it's got four sides, the white, the black, the gold, and the silver, and then you can take it out and make it into a diffuser. Now, why do I find this to be very, very important, for, especially for beginner photographers? Because this is your cheapest way to manipulate light. And with photography, you'd want to be able to make everything look good, especially if you're doing portraits. Though it is not essential if you do decide that you want to be shooting landscapes. If you're gonna be shooting landscapes, then instead of this one, maybe you could have a tripod instead as part of this list. Uh, I recommend this to all those people who actually want to get into portrait photography or wedding photography, because this is the best and cheapest way for you to be able to manipulate the light. Okay, so those are my 10 suggestions for basic photography gear and accessories that every beginner photographer that should have. So let's go through it again. Uh, five in one reflector, your cleaning kit, a good prime lens, a hard drive to store all your files, branded memory cards, memory card cases, a memory card reader, extra batteries, and a good strap, or maybe a clip. And last but not the least, a very good camera bag, okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed that very, very short video. And again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. And while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you wanna see more of my images, feel free to follow me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.